Hi everyone, my name is Pierre-Alexandre Ballant. I'm a professor of economic geography and network science at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And I'm also a visiting professor at the MIT Media Lab. In this video, I will talk about the backbone of network analysis, which is matrix algebra. So this video is, is part of a series of, uh, of videos uh, on uh, network analysis in R. So I basically assume that you have R and RStudio already installed on your computer, because that's what we're going to use for, to perform the analysis. Uh, if you don't, you should just stop here and follow this link that will basically guide you uh, for the installation of R and RStudio. So the very first step uh, in our uh, in, our, in today's video is basically to create a matrix. So we create a matrix, we're going to create an object called M and we will use the function as matrix. So we will basically tell R that the object we're creating uh, should be a matrix. And what we'll do is basically to import uh, a data set uh, that is available uh, on my GitHub profile. So the data set is comma separated value separated. So basically the different uh, value cells are separated by commas. So we'll use the function read.csv and the argument of the function will be first the link to the data set, which you can find in the video description. So this is the link I'm using. So the data will be extracted from this link directly from the web to your computer. And I will also specify in the argument of the function that the values are separated by commas. Because you could also, depending on uh, your country of origin, uh, you could basically have a value separated by semicolon. Now, I will also specify that my dataset has headers. So basically, there are some uh, names of my nodes in the columns. And I will also find these names in the first column of my data sets. So I also indicate that the very first row should not be considered as data, just like the name of the columns. And the first column indicates uh, the names of the, of the nodes, so should also not be considered as data. So I will run this little piece of code. And what you see that I have now created a data set here. So I have M here. Okay, and I'm going to look now at what I have created. So if I just run the command M, what I get is this matrix. So what I have in rows is like a set of individuals. Just for the example, imagine that these are customers. So Pierre, Ron, Andrea, David, Cesar, and Paola are customers and they buy different type of products. So they can buy a tie, a book, a surfboard, a short, or just a bottle of water. And the cells in this matrix will basically tell you whether they buy a specific product or not. So Pierre, for instance, is more interested in buying surfboard than buying books. And that's the type of network structure that Amazon uses to make a recommendation. So this is the type of metrics we will be working with. The first uh, thing that we can do is to check the dimension of this matrix. So using the function dim, D-I-E-M, I can check the dimension of my matrix. So what I see here is that I have six rows and five columns. I indeed have six different customers and five different products. These are the dimension of my column. I can subset my matrix. Maybe I only care about the, the customers that both tie. So in this case, what I will do is like, I will select 
all my customers, but only Thai. So only I will select row number one to six, but only column number one. And then I get a vector of customers that bought or not a Thai. So this is the vector I extracted. If I now do this, I will get the first two columns. I will get column number two. If I want the first two columns, I can do this. Okay. Then I have like a subset of my metrics that can be useful if you want to explore uh, the data set you just uh, started to analyze. Now, most network analysis is actually based on matrix algebra. So you probably already heard about the concept of degree centrality, where we try to analyze which nodes are more connected and are more central in the network. Very often it's as simple as looking at the sum. So if I just use the function row sums, so I look at the sum of my row, basically what I get, you know, is a vector that tells me in this specific case, if you go back to the meaning of this matrix, this specific case, how many products a specific customer bought, you know, and you see that Paola is very active. And in fact, Paola is buying one, two, three, four, and five products. And that would be like the very first step to compute degree centrality. So this is very, very simple. And you will see that's actually also very powerful. Now, something very useful is to look at the transpose of the matrix. So in this case, when I look at M, I have customers in rows and products in columns. Now, if I will look at the transpose of the matrix just using the function t, what I will get is in this case products in rows and customers in columns. Now, this is going to be very useful when we will uh, study more in details some kind of uh, recommendation algorithm and some measure of relatedness, the fact that we are able to transpose the matrix uh, very easily. Now, a little bit of uh, very basic matrix algebra and computation. Uh, what you can do is just add matrices. So if you do M plus M, what you get is basically every element of the matrix is added to every other element of the other matrix. Now, you could also, uh, you can create new objects based on this matrix algebra. So for instance, if I would want to create an object called X as like the combination and the addition of my two matrices, what I will get is now a new object S, X, and X will have this value. So every time you make some kind of uh, matrix computation, you can use it to create new objects. You can also look at, you can also multiply the different elements of the matrix. And this is very important. I'm in this case, only multiplying the elements of the matrix. So if you see here, you basically have the same matrix because every uh, element is, is, is a zero or one. Now, if I will just change just one element of this matrix, let's say I'm gonna be changing one specific element. Oh, I'm going to specify five here. Now I have my matrix here and you see that what I indicate is that Cesar was very thirsty. He bought uh, five bottles of water. Okay. Now if I run this again, what I get is 25 here because this element has been multiplied by itself, which would be exactly the same as looking at the square of the matrix, okay? That would be the same. Now, this is very different from what we call matrix multiplication. And to do matrix multiplication, what we need to do is to use this specific symbol, which is basically the percentage. And you can only do matrix multiplication if the number of rows of the first matrix equal the number of columns of the second matrix. So we could only do, only do that, you know, if the matrix M has like one, two, three, four, five, 
six uh, columns on is that if tm sorry rows has like six different rows if tm will have six different columns so in this case we can transpose we can multiply m by its transpose and then what we get is a matrix that has six rows and then six columns let me go back to my original matrix with only zero and one okay so this is my matrix now this is my matrix back to the original data set where paola is buying everything and water is being bought by everyone now i have this type of matrix so the very core of the the amazon recommendation algorithm is basically to multiply the transpose of this matrix by the original matrix so tm will be multiplied by m and what i get is basically the number of times two products have been bought by the same customer so if i look at tie a tie and a book you see that ron bought a tie and a book andrea bought a tie and a book cesar bought a, a tie and a book and also paula that's why i have a four here now very few people that buy a tie also tend to buy a surfboard actually the only person that did that was paola who is also someone who bought everything so it looks like a tie and a book are frequently bought together so of course the the the, the, the algorithm the amazon algorithm is a bit more complicated than that but this is the like the, the key idea this is really how how that works and what you can see from this exercise is that a surfboard and a short tend to be bought you know pretty often together so let's say we call this matrix p which tells us something about you know the similarity of products so let's say that i create an object p you know which is the transpose of m multiplied by m okay and this is p right. what i have in diagonal is just number of times a specific object has been bought so you see here water been bought six times and the tie has been bought four times now that's going to be very useful later to normalize this matrix and to create something we call relatedness but for now what i can also do i can set the diagonal to zero you know diagonal of p equals zero if i'm not interested in the diagonal and then i will get this I can what I can also do is to look at maybe the similarity of customers and in this case what I will do is to multiply my matrix by its transpose and in this case what I will get is a matrix that tells me how similar two customers are and now I see for instance that Pierre and David tend to be very similar why because they bought three products in common well let, let's check that pierre bought like a surfboard a short and some water and david did exactly the same so this is why you have a three here and you have a three here so this type of network the m network is called a bipartite network also called a two mode network so because we have two different types of nodes all right so this is it for our video on matrix algebra thanks for following